Lord. I just saw a live on YouTube signal. Yes, I am starting the stream. We haven't quite gone live, but we're about to, folks. Good morning, everyone. Okay, there we are. I just oh, yeah. 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 yeah, so Evelyn, you're doing all right, it looks like. Well, thank you. So far, so good, huh? <laughs> yeah, fingers crossed. I sent out some prayers and good meditations last night. No tech problems. <laughs> thank you. Doesn't hurt, might help. <laughs> So can everyone go up to their name and click on the three dots to rename it with the name of your lead? Hmm. Um, on a phone, how do you do that? I don't know, Ann, can you do it on a phone? Here, Cheryl, I'll change your name for you. Or we can- Okay, thank you. Nice. If you're having- uh, Jean, is it necessary for me to do that? You're the secretary, so I put secretary in your title. So I think yeah, I, I see that. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's sufficient for me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's a great idea. But we're also asking everybody when they speak, you know, when they speak to announce their name and their league. But of okay. course, not everybody's going to speak. So it's nifty to see where they're from. And Anna, Rachel, you'll mute, mute everybody except Evelyn when we begin. You yes. bet. And just as a note, if you all want to double check that little microphone looking thing in the bottom left corner of your Zoom screen is how you mute yourselves. Attendees, we won't be able to see or hear you, um, but you can always put questions in the chat or in the Q&A function. I'll be keeping an eye on the Q&A and we've got a host of folks keeping an eye on the chat. And so, uh, yeah, Anne and um, Rachel Thompson, who I don't think we've heard from yet in this little conversation, uh, I'll make a very brief uh, welcoming statement and then defer to you and Rachel to tell everybody uh, what they need to know to get started. Now, of course, throughout the day, it's probably gonna be necessary to repeat things, but at least you'll get us started up front. I, it's 8.57, is that correct, everybody? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm, I intend to start promptly at nine, uh, but I see we have 42 participants. So we'll see how many we gain in the next few minutes. I would guess that some people might be a bit confused with several connection. Oh. Yeah, because I, I got on the wrong one the first time. Um, Jane, did each of us, each delegate, have their own panelist log in? His or her? Uh, Jane, you are muted. I, I, I resent everybody the invitation as a panelist. That'd be a good idea. Um, about um, 28 minutes ago now, so that it would be right at the top of, so that the correct link would be right at the top of everybody's email. It worked for me. Wonderful. Oh, Catherine, great, good, good idea. Yeah, it worked for me as well, so thank you for that, Anne. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Deborah. Yeah, that very, was great. very helpful. <laughs> and it is going up, we're up to 49. And we have 77, and we have a total of 77 delegates, folks, if everybody were to attend. Okay, oh, Kelly said, yeah, that was helpful. Thank you, Ann. And just once again, before we get started, if you could rename yourselves to have your um, local league at the end of your name on Zoom, if any of you are having trouble with that, you can let me or Ann know and we can we can do it for you. Hmm. Uh, so would you go ahead and do oh, where is that? Yeah. that? For sure. Joan, which league are you with? Sorry. Southwest Missouri. You got it. Uh, I don't know how to do that either. It's Denise Harrington and I'm with Metro St. Louis. Everybody, there's three little dots. There's three little dots in the upper right-hand corner of your 
you know, if you'll put your cursor up there, there's three little dots. And if you'll click on it, rename is an option. Okay. Thank you. Sure enough. Okay. I do not see that. It's the three dots next to your name, Marilyn, up at the top, if you see your name. Oh, oh by your name. Okay. Yep. Oh, okay. I was looking in the corner. Okay. Thank you. You can also click on participants and then more. The thing is, the thing is, it doesn't give you enough space to put the full, your full name and the full name of your league um, on screen. I typed in Metro mm -hmm. St. Louis and the only thing that shows up is Metro. Just put St. Louis. STL. You also see St. Louis. Marilyn, I you're already you're already renamed as treasurer. Okay. Jean or Ann did that for you. Oh, okay. Thank you. So you're good. Thank you, darling. <laughs> okay, folks. It is nine oh one a.m. So I am prepared to convene the. Um, Convention. Is there any reason we should not convene? <laughs> I hear no reason. Okay. Hello, Cindy Carr, the last to join us. So, um, the convention of the League of Women Voters of Missouri will please come to order. Welcome to everyone attending the 65th convention of our Missouri League. Our bylaws mandate that every two years, we need to do the business of the convention. We will debate positions and share ideas. And when we adjourn, each of us will have a better understanding of how league governance works. Due to the limitations of our virtual one day event, we will sometimes expedite today's proceedings, but we will always adhere to the basic principles of the democratic process and to the rules of the convention. We will also adhere mostly to the Roberts Rules of Order to maintain an orderly process. Now, from this point forward, it will be necessary for delegates to use Zoom features to participate in the convention business. Therefore, Ann Sappington and Rachel um, Tom Thompson, who are our, I call them our tech meisters, will now provide some instruction on the use of Zoom features. So, um, and then I do want to tell everybody, please be sure if you communicate to us by chat or verbally, please always include your full name and you could, uh, and please just, it's okay to include the abbreviated name of your league. So now let's hear from Ann and Rachel about the Zoom features we're going to be using today. Hello. Um, I think for most of us, the most useful features are going to be um, the, the mute button and the start and stop video buttons. Um, so the mute button is that little microphone that's in the very bottom left corner of your Zoom window. Um, so please make sure unless you actively want to be speaking that um, you are clicking that mute button so that there's a red line through it. Similarly, if you need to take a break from your camera for any reason, I myself have a, have a rambunctious 10 week old puppy attending convention with me, you can um, click stop video and that will take you off camera for a moment. But please be aware that for all of our votes by acclamation, we will be using not the raise hand function because that can get confusing, but our actual physical hands. So this is where my elementary teacher comes in. If you can see me, raise your hand. Um, thank you. We will be using those too. So um, like I say, we're going to be using those rather than the raise hand feature just because sometimes people forget to lower them and it can create uncertainty around counts. We will also be using the Zoom polling feature You'll have a minute for each poll. They'll show up and invite you to click yes or no and just click yes or no in accordance with your vote. Rachel, what am I missing? I think you've got a handle on everything. Yeah, the only other thing is that if you would like to speak, 
um, you know, during the debate, either as a pro or a con to any, um, I don't know, thing we're voting on. Uh, if you would please type your name into the chat and which side you would like to speak on. And that's how we'll be um, allowing people to speak. The order in which you put your name into the chat uh, to speak on proposals or concurrences and that kind of stuff. Uh, I do have a question, Rachel, because I simply don't recall what was decided yesterday about how during the morning session, just uh, generally speaking, we will not actually vote on, well, there will be only one item to vote on before we have lunch. But for all, everything else that's discussed, we will ask for clarification. So some, someone, a delegate, who wants simply to ask a question about a present for clarification, are we going through the chat feature for that also? I don't recall what was decided. I don't recall what was decided either. Um, okay. I would say chat using the chat would be great if there's, especially if there seems to be a lot of questions for clarification. Um, yeah. Okay. And you might have a different opinion. No, okay. Using the chat is probably great. And then just a note to attendees. We can't see or hear you. You can, however, chat to us. And should you want to, you can also put your desire to speak into the Q&A box, which I will be monitoring. All right, thank you very much. We do have people monitoring both the Q&A and the chat. So generally speaking, delegates would not verbally speak out unless invited. You know, at, at points I will invite invite somebody to speak. All right, so um, is there anything else, Anne and Rachel, you want to say? I don't believe so. Okay, very good. Sure and we will proceed. We'll proceed. And so the first thing, before we get to our order of business, I do want to introduce the members of the State Board of Directors. Uh, these are people who are currently serving on the board for the State League. So when I call your name, when I call the name of you, the board member, would you please, uh, un, everybody could go ahead and unmute right now. All, I suggest all board members unmute because when I call your name, would you please respond with your own name and your league and that way we will be able to see you. So first is Nancy Copenhaver, vice president. Nancy Copenhaver from Overly. Louise Wilkerson, Secretary. Louise Wilkerson, Metro St. Louis. Marilyn McLeod, Treasurer. Marilyn McLeod, Columbia Boone County League. And then our board directors who are Carol Schreiber. Carol Schreiber, Columbia Boone County. Joan, all right, Joan Gentry. Joan Gentry, Southwest Missouri. Kathleen Boswell. Kathleen Boswell, Sedalia. Nancy Miller. Now, Na I want to say that Nancy Miller of Metro St. Louis is ill this morning. Uh, she said she would try to view the proceedings but would not be able to participate. So uh, we'll be filling in wherever Nancy Miller would have appeared on the agenda. Next board member, Sharon Swan. Sharon, are you with us today? For this, no, okay. Sharon Swan is from the Mexico League. Cheryl Ufinger. Cheryl Ufinger, Kansas City. Linda McDaniel. Linda McDaniel, are you with us? Okay, not, but she is a member of Metro St. Louis. And finally, Debbie Wade Howard. <clears throat> Debbie Wade Howard, I am from the Metro St. Louis League and I can't do chat. So if I have to say something, I'll just have to say it. <laughs> well, let me say that Debbie is our parliamentarian. So we will be hearing from her immediately throughout the day. Thank you, Debbie. <laughs> All right. Uh, I want to mention that past state presidents who are serving as delegates today are Linda McDaniel, Elaine Blodgett. Elaine Blodgett, well, Elaine, 
I haven't noticed Elaine, but uh, and Sadell Shayer been a very uh, important and contributing member of the league, and as as has Kathleen Boswell, who you've already met because she's on the current board, and Debbie Wade Howard, who is our parliamentarian, whose name you see on the screen. She is also a past state president. We want to thank especially our executive director, Jean Dugan. Jean, <laughs> could you say something so we get to see who? who you are and where you are. Jean, you're muted. Yep, you can see me in the office in okay. St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, we have a people powered care map sign, your vote matters sign, and it's a nice rainy day in St. Louis. Well, yes, thank you, Jean. And we also want to thank you. Somebody's need thank you. needs to mute now, thank you. Um, we also want to thank Chantal Halston. Now, Jean, I don't think Chantal is in the office with you today, is she? No, she's not. Okay, but we please extend our thanks to yeah. her for the many things she has done to help us prepare materials for today, particularly as well as her work throughout the year. All right, now we will move on actually to the agenda because we have proceeded through the introductions and the next item is uh, corrections to the workbooks. I, Evelyn, I, yeah, Evelyn yeah. if yeah. I could inter interrupt, I'm Marjorie Bramer from Southwest Missouri. Yeah. I didn't, you didn't oh, call on me. I beg your pardon, Marge. I just in the excitement, I must have overlooked you. Thank <laughs> you, Marge. Yes. yes, huge contributor to all the work of the board. And how about Joan? Uh, Joan Gentry, I do believe I acknowledge, but Joan. Want to give us a wave? Joan, acknowledge me, Southwest. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know what I missed, folks. But any other corrections to the board? <laughs> no. Okay. We'll proceed to corrections to the workbook. So I do want to invite any corrections that are needed, but I will mention to you these things. So if you are working with your paper workbooks, I want you, you could go to in workbook one, which is the one with the pretty picture on the front with the yellow umbrellas. In that book on page 23, on the slate of candidates, please line out Nancy Copenhaver and insert Don Crozier because we have a candidate. Just on the nominating committee. Nancy Copenhaver will still be our vice president. This is yeah. on the next nominating committee that we're glad to have Don Crozier take her slot. That's, thank you, thank you. Then in workbook two with the purple cover on page 35, at the bottom of the page, you will see a list of our leagues and the PMP owed. And on the very bottom line of totals, the total for the Missouri PMP is just $100 less, making it $23,530. And so that is the next to the last column on the last slide. Also in that same book, you could add to page 34, just completely add to the page that the readers of the convention minutes are Julie Steiger and Ann Elwell. They are both of Southwest Missouri. So the readers for the convention minutes will be Julie, Julie Steiger and Ann Elwell. On the same page, and you know, we're talking about workbook two, page 34, Delete Stacy Webb as a timekeeper and add Rachel Thompson. And the final correction to that page is to add Ann Sappington to the credentials committee that is listed. Add Ann Sappington to the credentials committee that is listed. Now, the, are there any other corrections to be made to our workbooks? No, okay. We'll proceed now to the 
adoption of the order of business. The workbook, workbook two has an agenda in it, but we are proposing a substitute agenda that was emailed to all delegates last night. Uh, Ann Sappington, do we have the substitute agenda to display? Yes, you should be seeing it now. Okay, thank you very much. Whatever you see in red type has been added to the agenda that appears in the workbook. So go on down the page if you would, Ann. You will notice that we've deleted all time. I'm talking about all clock times, except when we start, when Dr. Turner starts, when we take our lunch break and when we adjourn. That's because we found it was, um, it just seemed impossible for us to gauge actually at what time we would begin any one section. So I do invite um, any other, uh, so I am uh, proposing the adoption of a substitute agenda. Do I have a motion to accept the agenda, the substitute agenda? I move Carol Schreiber from Columbia. All right, is there a second? Second, Mary Lindsay, Kansas City. Thank you. And so it is moved and seconded to accept the substitute agenda. Uh, is there discussion of this agenda before we proceed? All right, we will now do a vote. I will call for the vote by raising your hand. And it is simply a major majority vote that would prevail. So I guess we'll have to uh, eliminate the agenda for the moment and so we can show our hands. So I, will, I won't vote as chair. And uh, would someone on the elections committee announce the result? Uh, the motion has carried. Thank you. The motion has carried. Therefore, the agenda is adopted. We'll now proceed to the roll call of leagues. So what I will do now is what, what we did with the uh, introducing the board members. I will call out the, um, the league name, the league name. And if the president is present as a delegate, please announce your name and the name of your league so we have a chance to see you. So this is a roll call of the leagues that are present. Columbia, Boone County. Boone County, Columbia, Boone County is present, but the current present president is not attending. And Marilyn, who I is your current president? All right, Marilyn, who is your current president? Uh, Barbara Hoppe, H-O-P-P-E. Thank you. All right, Greater Choplin area. Greater Choplin area. Karen Roberts, I'm secretary. I'm not sure if Neely, the president is on or not. Okay, that's fine. Thank you, Karen. Kansas City, Jackson, Clay and Pat counties. Ann Roberts, the new president. All right, welcome Ann. Metro St. Louis. Angie Dunlap. Metro St. Louis. Hello, Angie. Mexico, Audrain County. Anyone from Mexico, Audrain County? Okay, Sharon Swan has been the president there. We don't know if she still is. Moberly, Randolph County. Hi, Nancy Copenhaver, Moberly, Randolph County president. Hey, thank you. Sedalia, Pettis County. Kathleen Boswell, uh, sort of half president, now all president. <laughs> all right. Faithful member, right, of the Sedalia League. Southwest Missouri. Do you I like Gray 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 
<laughs> That's okay. Julie Steiger is announcing herself. Now, let's let Marge Bramer, are, are you co-presidents for the time being, Julie? Yes. Okay. All right, well, we have already met Marge, but they, um, she and Julie are co-presidents there. Tri Lakes. Ginger Whitty, uh, president, and my three other delegates are also here. Carolyn Cagle, Sharon Clark, and Sarah Presley. Thank you for mentioning them. Very great. Okay. All right. And we want to send out our hello to the members of Southeast who, Missouri who, thought not present as delegates, might be viewing this meeting. So hello to anyone listening from Southeast Missouri, which is otherwise known as the Cape Girardeau uh, location. All right, so now we will move on to the adoption of the convention rules, which are in workbook one, beginning on page five. And um, I would like to just mention a few highlighted items. Uh, so for those of you who will turn to page five in workbook one, I will refer to um, the introduction, which mentions that if we want to change a rule, suspend or change a rule later in the meeting, it would take a two thirds vote. So I'd, I'd be very surprised if there is a reason for us to change anything during the meeting. It's going to be a casual, vote, a casual meeting folks. So, um, but on item four on page five, it mentions only delegates and those authorized by the chair may address the convention. So although we may have some non-delegates communicating to us in the chat, they must be, there must be a reason to recognize them for them to be able to speak to the convention, right? And then um, in item five, it says delegates must be recognized by the chair before speaking. And so we, we've already discussed how General, generally throughout the day, if you want to speak, you must put your request to speak in the chat and then be recognized before actually speaking. Uh, during the debate, which will be particularly this afternoon, uh, no person will speak more than once until other, all others have spoken. Be aware that um, each speaker is limited to one minute and for the moment, we do believe it's a, it would be a good practice for our tech meisters to mute a speaker when the one minute is up. And the one the there will be a timer shown on the screen uh, with a countdown of each minute. Uh, item seven asks you to please leave your uh, speakers on mute throughout the day. Unless, unless there would be a reason for all members to be unmuted. Uh, item eight, uh, if we have just a major technical disrup disruption, we would uh, either, if we're totally disengaged from everybody, we would send email messages about what to, what to expect next. Generally speaking, if we have a disruption, our tech meisters will try to get us back online but if that were to prove impossible, we would arrange for resumption at another time. And um, item 10, the method of voting shall be, has been announced before we start, before we started the meeting. It'll be announced again when we get into the voting uh, part of it. Um, the second sentence on item 10 that says voice votes shall be taken by means of the raise hand icon and that's not true. We have decided to go only with the raise hand. So you should line that out on item 10. And um, I, on the following page, page seven, item C at the top and then look for Roman numeral three. It's very important to mention that proposals for concurrence are debatable, but not amendable. So a concurrence is the result of careful study, of careful study. Therefore, it's, um, it's simply not the time <laughs> to be amending a concurrence, okay. All right, are there any questions or concerns about the convention rules? And um, if not, um, 
by general consent, may we accept the rules as I are as printed in the book, except for the one uh, deletion of the voice vote, or, or the vote by raise your hand, excuse me, the deletion. Hearing no objections, the rules are adopted. Okay. So we will now move on to um, the appointments. Uh, please simply refer to your workbooks, um, workbook two or your workbook, workbook two, page 34, to see the members of uh, appointed to convention committees. My thanks go out to all of our committees who have worked to prepare this convention and will be continued to work throughout the day. Uh, I do want to especially thank Debbie Waite Howard, who has coached me uh, throughout the past two years on parliamentary procedure. And then um, I pretty much had Debbie on speed dial <laughs> as I prepared for the con convention. And uh, she will be working with me and with all of us to see that parliamentary procedure is followed. Um, now be aware that if questions arise about parliamentary procedure, Debbie will have the final determination as to the correct procedures. Uh, the timekeepers for the convention are uh, Joan Gentry, who will be advising me on the, uh, the efficient progress of our agenda because we are committing to ending this to adjourning no later than four o'clock today. If we finish all of our business prior to four, we will adjourn prior to four. Um, our board secretary, Louise Wilkerson, will be taking minutes of the, of the convention. And you heard me announce a committee of two that will read her minutes, work with her to, to correct them if any corrections are needed. They will then forward the, their agreed upon final minutes to the new board, which will accept those minutes. Therefore, there are no minutes of the past convention to approve today. Now we will move on to the credentials report. Our delegates are shown in workbook two on page 33, but we do have a credentials report and um, who will be reporting for the credentials committee? I believe Ann Sappington, did you plan to report that we have a quorum? I did and as we have um, 74 <laughs> panelists, um, we do in fact have a quorum. All right, and we have a requisite number of uh, local leagues too. Thank you very much. So uh, is there a motion to accept the credentials report? Move to accept the credentials report. Thank I you. I second Nick. Angie Dunlap. Thank you. It has all right, it has moved and seconded to accept the credentials report. All those in favor, raise your hand. All those, up, and lower your hand. All those opposed, raise your hand. All right, may we have a um, report from the elections committee about the result. That motion has carried. The motion has carried, therefore I declare a quorum is present and this convention is competent to do business. So we will now, just checking the time folks to see if we're on track. Thank you. All right. Uh, yes, Nancy. Um, when, when you are speaking, you fill the screen pretty much. So therefore all of the other pictures don't show up. So is it, is it working okay for those who are counting the votes if they're only seeing five or six? I'm going to let uh, Ann Sappington and Rachel Thompson answer that question. Nancy? So would they, Ann and Rachel, Ann, could answer? So in order to see and make the count, um, our elections committee can change their view. So if um, to the gallery view, which will make it possible. Um, we will also stop spotlighting the video of the speaker during, um, during the voting process. 
Thank you. All right, thank you for the question, Nancy. So we will now uh, proceed with a roll call of pledges from our leagues. Jean Dugan will be announcing the roll call. So Jean, please. We have a total of eight members at large that pay no state PMP, which was the correction in the workbook. Columbia Boone County, Maryland, we have you as 197 total members, 3,550 PMP to the state. Is that correct? That is correct, but our treasurer will respond, Ruth Milledge. Okay. Ruth? I'm unmuting, pardon me. That is correct. Thank you. Kansas City, JCP counties, our new uh, president, Ann Calvert, can you confirm that as of January 31st, we had 265 members for a state PMP total of 4,830? That is correct. Thank you. Mexico Audrain, has Sharon Swan joined the call yet? Is there anyone from Southeast Missouri on this call? We'll move on to Kathleen Boswell in Sedalia and Pettis County that is now unfortunately down to three members with our mm -hmm. loss of Mary Barrett. Total PMP of $60. Can you confirm, Kathleen? Yes, I confirm. Okay, Southwest Missouri, either Julie or Marge, can you confirm 140 members as of January 31st? Total PMP of $2,630. That's correct. Thank you, Marge. Moberly Randolph County, Nancy Copenhaver, can you confirm 12 members at a total PMP of $240? That is correct. Thank you. Metro St. Louis, Louise Wilkerson, can you confirm 632 members for a PMP to the state of $11,100? That is correct. And Tri Lake, uh, Ginger Witte, can you confirm 11 members in our uh, ninth? Uh, local league for $220 PMP. That is correct. Thank you. And Greater Joplin, Karen Roberts, can you confirm 28 members of our 10th local league for a total PMP of $560? I can confirm. Okay, thank you everyone. We have confirmed our membership. It is very exciting that we are um, over 1300 members of the League of Women Voters of Missouri. And thank you, uh, Jean. As usual, you've done an excellent job of keeping us on track among our 10 leagues, right? So we will now proceed with the agenda and um, we, are, uh, we will now have the nominating committee report, uh, which will be about by Kathleen Boswell, uh, the chair of the nominating committee, Elaine Blodgett has had surgery and so Kathleen will do reporting for the committee. Are you there, Kathleen? Yes, and you can see on your screen, hopefully, and it is on page 23 of workbook one, if you wanna follow along. Um, it does have the highlighted area on Nancy Copenhaver's name down in the nominating committee, and she is being replaced by Don Crozier of Metro St. Louis. Other than that, this is the slate being presented do we have any um, other nominations? All right, Kathleen, since there are no more nominations from the floor, um, do you have a motion? I move that the slate be not be accepted by acclamation. Is there a second to accept the slate by acclamation? I second Angie Dunlap. St. Louis. Thank you, Angie. So the, it has been moved and seconded to accept the slate by acclamation. All those in favor, raise your hand, please. All those opposed, raise your hand. <laughs> and we'll have a report from the elections committee when it's done. When it's ready. Uh, motion has carried. 
Okay, thank you so much, Carol, for the announcement. Okay. Well, basically, if you were voting by acclamation, you didn't need any vote uh, because uh, unless you had somebody ob objecting, so you really didn't need that vote. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Debbie. Now, Debbie, you, you know, if I do that again, you're welcome to just step in and stop me. All right. Uh, thank, thank I was you. kind of wool gathering and didn't think about it. <laughs> okay. Oh my goodness. I've never known you to wool gather before. All right. So now uh, we will move down the agenda to the presentation of the amendments to the bot to the Is that your bylaw. phone or mine? And these will be uh, presented by Joan Gentry. Joan? Yeah, hello, everyone. Um, first of all, I would like to introduce or at least let you know the members of the committee who worked on the bylaws. That would be Marge Bramer, Linda McDaniel, Evelyn Maddox, Maddox, Maddox I'm sorry, Evelyn, and myself. Um, just to kind of remind you about the importance of the bylaws, every two years, local board members and local leagues will send a the bylaws committee amendments to be recommended for consideration during the state convention. Article 15 amendments in the bylaws provides the guidelines for amending the, the, um, the bylaws at any time. I'm going to be presenting the recommended amendments this morning and then this um, there will be a motion after the presentation. If you would look at workbook one, page 17, or follow along on the screen, what I'm going to do is simply begin to point out to you the proposed amendments um, that are being presented to you today. The first thing to realize is that with articles two and three, the purpose is to bring our bylaws into um, into alignment with the national. And so as you look at that, in particular, you will notice um, that item B brings us into, um, on section two, item B brings us into alignment with the National League's statement on diversity, equity, and inclusion. The rationale, of course, is that the proposed amendment is identical to the LWVUS bylaws as passed at that convention. And just to read that to you in the rationale, it's LWV is an organization fully committed to diversity, equity, and inclusion in principle and in practice. Diversity, equity, and inclusion are central to the organization's current and future success in engaging all individuals, households, communities, and policymakers in creating a more perfect democ democracy. It is a fundamental value of the organization and belongs alongside our hallmark, our hallmark of nonpartisanship. So that will bring us into um, alignment as far as diversity, equity, and inclusion are concerned. Article two, article three is simply bringing us into alignment with membership. Um, and Excuse me, uh, can I suggest yeah. ask for clarification? Oh, sure. Yeah. Uh, an article. Well, thank you. Because, and I'm particularly a sense of that because I'm aware of one thing I want to ask you about. Sure. Okay. On Article 2, Section 1, there appears the word purpose, which is underlined. You have said the words coming directly from the national uh, bylaws. The word purpose is singular. Yet the, the phrase after that, the purposes are. So uh, do we have a grammatical problem there? Um, I'm sorry, would you tell me where you're looking at again? Okay, uh, article two, purpose and policy. Right, I see you at the beginning. Um, right. There, okay. that's singular, whereas it's followed by two purposes. Is there, and is that because um, purpose appears in the national bylaws? That's yes. because we have two purposes on our in in um, in our bylaws as we as an amended. So what we are saying here is that the purposes, as opposed to the purpose, it's the purposes of the LWVMO are to promote political responsibility responsibility through informed and active participation in government. So that's a, just simply um, a gr grammatical correction. 
All right. Well, thank you. And we will, and again, we will reiterate how, if there um, is any gra sim simple grammatical errors in a document that is viewed today, we will correct it in, in the right. document or in the guide to state action. Thank you, Joan. Please. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and what uh, I was, uh, this, yeah. may, sure. this secretary, so um, are we saying that we need to change the title of our article two so that it reads purposes and policy or are we gonna leave it as it is? May I suggest that that decision will be made by the, uh, the people who actually uh, um, craft the final bylaws because that's just grammatical because it's just grammatical. But the national, the national Evelyn, you'd have to look at national because our first three um, uh, amendments or uh, first three sections of our bylaws have to be exactly like national. So however national does it is how we have to do it, whether it's grammatical or not. Okay. Uh, Linda McDaniel has a comment too. Un unmute, Linda. Yes. Okay, I got went to uh, U.S. bylaws and Article Two. The wording uh, is purposes and policies. Section word, uh, section one, purposes plural. So okay. I think we just uh, you know can go ahead and uh, okay. change that as it is. As has been said, I think just grammatical. And it continues to apply with uh, the national bylaws, which we've already understood is is our uh, purpose or is our our aim. Okay, thank you. That that settles it then. Yes. Okay, thank you, everyone, for bringing that to our attention. Um, are we ready to move ahead then to Article Three? Please do. Okay, so Article Three again um, recognizes. In our case, the member, not in our case, but recognizes the member at large unit. Oh, yeah. We've had, um, in the past two years, we've actually had two. Well, that's not um, we've had two units, I'm sorry, members at large units. There was some sound in the background, so I was wondering what that was. The types on um, section three, the types of a membership that's coming into compliance with national. Those who are students are defined as individuals enrolled either as full or part-time with an accredited institution. The rationale for both of those is simply that individuals who join an existing member at large unit should be considered to be members of LWVMO. And then um, or brings the league in line with the US bylaws. Do we have any questions? For, for clarification. Okay, moving forward to Article 5. In the case of this particular article, it became evident that we really needed some kind of guidelines for um, bringing our own documents up to date. And so we've included as a part of the job, you know, the job description of the vice president as to be the chair of a committee responsible for updating the guide to state action, attaining the league LWVMO board's approval of the updated guide, posting the guide on the LWVMO website and making the approved guide accessible to all LWV members no later than 90 days following each biennial convention. The rationale is that this is one of our primary go-tos as we operate as a league and um, it, we've decided that we needed some specific guidelines. Somewhat, somewhere along the line, you're muted. Um, I'm sorry, I'm, um, <laughs> can you hear me? Uh, if somebody's got Elaine Blodgett on speed dial, call her and ask her to mute. <laughs> but go ahead, Joan. <laughs> okay, it's simply the, that it's really important that the guide to state action be updated in a very timely fashion, um, and that had not been provided for in our bylaws. So um, is there any 
uh, clarification needed for the rationale for doing that one. Hearing now, let's look at Article 6, Board of Directors, Section 2, Qualifications. Again, as the result of having two members at large units functioning uh, within the state of Missouri, it became evident that we needed to include units, members, um, member at large units in the event that we have new leagues forming in the future. Um, and so that's what you will see there. They, and what we're simply stating is that individuals who are members of a member at large unit should be qualified to serve as an officer or director of LWBMO. Any clarifications? Okay, section five, regular meetings. COVID, I think, um, presented us with several different concepts for clarification or for inclusion into our bylaws. Um, and we had included at the last um, convention that you know regularly scheduled board meetings in person. What we decided as a committee is that um, all we really need to say is to attend electronically and that covers all conditions so um, we just felt like we didn't need the extra verbiage there using Skype and so on. Section six, special meetings. It was also decided that in this stage of electronics that some of the timelines and the numbers of, of persons who needed to be contacted that are on the board needed to be looked at. And so what we've done is looked at how a special meeting can be um, called. With the advent of electronically sending messages, these kinds of things can happen much more quickly. So our rationale for changing these from days to hours simply was notifying the directors through electronic media is as effective as sending a written notice and the written notice what was what was to be used before. 24 hours notice allows the board to be more responsive to time sensitive situations and that a request from three members of the board is sufficient for calling a special meeting as opposed to the five. So this is just to make the um, special meetings more efficient in terms of timelines. Joan, mm -hmm. I'd like to make one little comment on this. Sure. Uh, we ha have found this to be an issue because sometimes when we're asked to uh, be part of a court a trial or a court case on voting rights or something, we have to make a decision very quickly. And that became very cumbersome with this old language. Thank you, Carol. That's exactly right. That's, um, um, I appreciate that input. Section eight on voting is a new section and it's the result of course of um, COVID impacting on how we get, how we gather and how we operate as a board or as leagues. And the fact that so many, so much of what we've done for the past almost year and a half has been virtual. Section eight then voting, decisions voted on by the board in person or electronically shall be considered valid. This particular section is, is here because LWV US has advised that some state laws prohibit electronic voting unless an organization specifically provides for that method. Although Missouri statutes do not currently have this requirement, including this provision would protect the organization from from future, excuse me, from future um, legislation. We felt like we needed to have it in place in our bylaws specifically, simply so that we can move forward regardless of what's going on in Jefferson City if, it, if an attempt is made to change those regu business regulations. Is there a question or clarification on this one? Um, I have a question. Sure. This is Mary Lindsay. Um, is it, is the, is the comma behind the word board needed? Because to me, that makes it sound like 
the board in person or electronically? Wouldn't it just be decisions voted on by the board in person or electronically shall be considered valuable or valid? I think that's a matter of a, a grammatical um, point that we can look at as we put this back together. Okay. Um, thanks, Mary. Anyone else? We'll move on to Article 7, Convention. Uh, this simply is, it's, this is the voting representation and delegates clarification. And as we looked through this, we found it um, relatively confusing, particularly since several leagues are now going to a co-president situation, and, but at the same time maintaining um, equity in terms of how we look at delegates for attending meetings and voting. You will also notice that um, we have changed references on timelines from weeks to months, because if you look at six weeks and you count back from the date that something is due, it becomes problematic with keeping that all straight. So we've, got, we've, we've moved everything from weeks when we can to months. And so you'll see um, in that first paragraph, section one, a final call for the convention shall be sent to presidents of local leagues at least one month before the opening date of the convention instead of the, the six weeks. And you will see that appearing, that kind of change appearing throughout this document. Looking at section two, composition, again, this is clarification in those cases when we have co-presidents as opposed to a single president and clarification of delegates, um, just in an attempt to make it easier to understand how delegates are assigned. The rationale is simply voting representation should be based on total membership that is reported to LWVUS on January 31st of said year. All members of the LWVMO board should be listed as voting delegates to be consistent with LWVUS bylaws for its board members. When we got to looking at voting delegates, there wasn't any place in this, in our bylaws document that mentioned um, the state board. Any questions or clarifications on this one? Section three, again, um, includes the member at large units, which we needed to make sure were included in our document. Again, the reference to voter, votes being taken in person or electronically, and we are working with electronic voting today. Individuals from a member at large unit or state board members should be allowed to serve as delegates. So that's, that's the rationale for um, those changes in section three. Any clarification needed there? Article eight council, section two composition. Again, reading through the original bylaws document it contained some references to um, different ways, that, different groups that could be considered. What we did was rewrite that whole paragraph to the council shall be composed of the president or one co-president of each local league, the chair of one, the chair or one co-chair of each member at large unit two delegates chosen by each local league and all the members of the LWVMO board. An alternate may be appointed by a local league for its president or co-president who cannot attend or by a member at large unit for its chair or co-chair who cannot attend. We simply wanted to clarify the language that uh, provided for presidents or co-presidents and the same with members at large units. Any points for clarification there? Uh, Joan, I just want yes. to mention that uh, one point that we, as we talked about this amendment to this by, bylaws, uh -huh. um, we were concerned that it be clear to be, that it would be fair to all league, leagues so that at right. any meeting 
there should not be two rep if a locally elected <laughs> presidents we right. didn't want both of them attending a meeting where there was just one president right. from all other local leagues so it was an issue of fairness right exactly yes article nine nominations and elections in, the, in section three, you'll notice we, again, um, from six weeks, one month becomes the deadline. And what we discovered very quickly with section four election and the result of COVID and Zoom meetings, it became evident that we needed to be able to conduct a, condition, a convention with a one day timeline if necessary, as opposed to two days. And so um, that's the rationale for the changes for uh, on section four, language should allow for a one day convention and for election by election by acclamation. And I think that's probably incorrectly spelled. Is that correct? <laughs> acclamation. That's correct. Is it correct as written? Okay, thank you. Any points to be made, any questions for clarification? Do you need to add members at large in that Cheryl Barnes, Kansas City, do you need to add the phrase members at large in that last paragraph where it says, the presidents of local leagues shall notify the members? Uh, let's see. On, the, on which section are we? I'm, I'm, I think I'm on the same place. Amendments, um, bylaws may be amended in the next paragraph. What's the page number, Cheryl Barnes? It's uh, article 15. My, did I jump ahead of you, page? I've got page 23. Yes, you did. We're on, on, article, we're on article 8. I'm sorry. <laughs> no problem. We'll get to article 15 pretty quickly, hopefully. Okay, is, are there any um, other comments or points of clarification before we move on to Article 10? Article 10, Principles and Programs, Section 3, Convention. Uh, again, you will see that we've moved away from the weeks to months in Section 3. And again, the rationale um, for Article 10, Section 3, it provides for local leagues proposals for program to be submitted at least two months prior to the opening date of convention. The submission of a proposal involving concurrence should be consistent with submissions for other proposals for program. And so we were maintaining a consistency um, at that point. Any points for clarification? Article 11, financial administration, the budget. Again, this is simply a matter of a timeline. We need to be, the rationale is to be consistent with other timelines in the documents, moving away from weeks to a month. Any comments or needs for clarification on Article 11? Article 15 amendments, and Cheryl, uh, we'll get to yours in just a minute here. Um, I have a question on that sure. one. Yes. Uh, Marilyn McLeod, Columbia. Um, mm -hmm. Let me see where that is. Back up here a minute. Um, for the start of the convention. Okay. Um, sorry, where we were. Oh, goodness. <laughs> I about. Uh, on section, on it, the start of the convention, are you looking look uh, at- It said at the start. Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, I'll pass because I can't find where it was that I had a question. Okay, Marilyn, were you talking about um, uh, at the beginning of the convention that phase? Yes, yeah. Okay, I'm um, going back to look at um, article eight. Section four, the election shall be under the direction of an election committee appointed by the president on the first day, and we're removing that on the first day, we're saying then at the beginning of the convention, as opposed to on the first day. Is that where you are? Yeah, no, that, that was, I thought there was a, a second one, but I, I withdraw my, 
question. <laughs> Sorry for the. <laughs> okay, not a problem. I've had that happen a lot to me. <laughs> Okay, looking at Article 15 amendments, um, we are looking at, again, changing the six weeks simply to the one month prior to the opening of the convention. And Cheryl, I think you had a question. It, uh, on the, yes, uh, thank you. Uh, on the second paragraph, the presidents of the local leagues, do you, we need to add something about members at large and their groups? Um, members at large do not belong to a local league, Cheryl. Oh, excuse me, Joan. <laughs> yes. No, 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 no. That's fine. That's fine. No, no, no they don't. Um, but I'm wondering how they get notified about uh, proposed amendments. Well, that's a good point. Joan, right. I'll explain through that. <laughs> uh, exactly. And, and you are correct. And that could be, that needs to be added. The presidents of local leagues and, and the chairman of um, unit, mal units. Yes and the chairs of the presidents and the chairs of. Uh, yes, but then we also, we also notify the members at large who don't have a unit. So uh, Joan, I'm thinking it needs to, the very, to begin the sentence, it needs to be, let's just say the board shall notify all members at large. Um, and I'm not sure that we have to even say the units. Uh, of proposed of proposed amendments. Um, would that cover it, folks? You'd have to check me out. And that would be a sentence. So the board notifies all members at large of proposed amendments, period. The presidents of local leagues shall notify the members of their leagues. Evelyn, I, I believe that after the presidents of local leagues, even with that additional statement for members at large, there should still be the words or chairs of member at large units. Okay. Because that is a different group from members at large individuals. All right, so I'm going to, I'm just crafting this. This is not a motion, but this is, a cra this is just crafting for clarification. Uh, but what if it were the board shall notify all, all chairs of members at large units of proposed amendments. And then let's just put a period on that. And a new statement, the board shall notify all members of large of proposed member amendment. So we've got the three different, the three things that have to happen. We have to tell members at large who don't belong to any unit. We have to tell the chair of a member at large unit and we have to tell the presidents of local leagues. Would, um, now I'm not sure that what I crafted was, um, shall we say, elegant enough for a motion. Marge, you've been tracking it pretty well. What do you think? And I should not, I should not, actually, I should not present motions either. <laughs> um, uh, may I suggest that we have the gist of the intent and that is to make sure that all three groups are mentioned in the amendment as being notified, duly notified by the board of proposed amendments. And perhaps um, when we um, put this in final form, we can clean up the language before we actually vote on it. Or are we gonna vote on it tomorrow? I mean, I'm sorry, this afternoon uh, no, Louise, this morning's substitute agenda provided for us to vote on these amendments this morning. Okay. Following the presentation. Okay. So, um, uh, so it could say the board shall notify all members at large and the presidents of local leagues uh, of the proposed amendments, or we could just have include all three in the same sentence. The board uh, shall notify right. all members at large, comma, uh, chairs of member uh, members a member at large units, comma, and the presidents of local leagues. All right. Now I um, proposed yeah. amendments. 
Now, we are not at this time um, debating or even presenting motions. So uh, it seems to me what we need to do is uh, call for motions on each of these articles. Uh, when we've finished, when we've finished any clarification of Article uh, 15, we'll go back and we will call for votes on each of these articles. And then at that time, it would be necessary to have a motion to amend. Okay, so Louise, you have time to craft that. And uh, I would hope you could put it in a chat after it, it'll be easy. I like your idea of just one sentence. But, uh, but and you have a little time. I'll try. <laughs> or somebody else, help her out. <laughs> Joan, is there yeah. more said about an Article 15? I have, no. a, this is Rachel Thompson, um, LWBKC. I have a question for clarification about Amendment 15. So in the first paragraph of Section 1 of Amendment 15, um, it again references how proposals for changes can be submitted by any state board member or any local league board. Is there any opportunity for members at large or member at large units to also pro propose changes? In this, as it's written there, there is not. Um, I would suppose that we probably need to include that. Okay. Well, and then also then at the end of that paragraph, I would assume that we would also want um, where it says in the second to last line, the recommendations of the board shall be sent to the presidents of the local league at least six weeks or one month in advance. Right. I assume that would want, we would want to include members at large and member at large units as well. Now, since we will be going through voting on all of the other prior amendments, there is time for people to craft proposed amendment, a, a proposed amendment okay. to Article 15. I would hope somebody could take all of these ideas and, and actually include them in one motion. Uh, Nancy Copenhaver has her hand raised. Okay. Uh, I would suggest that we could do all of this without amendments by just simply saying that we instruct the committee to, to include members at large and members at large units every time it refers to the presidents. And I would think that just by that one uh, request of the committee that we can take care of that. Debbie Wade Howard, would you please uh, respond to Nancy's uh, suggestion? Well, this is the only amendment where you haven't included them already. So I just think that you just want to be consistent with your bylaws that you would just want to amend the wording. And because all the other amendments that you've made have included that wording of the chairs of the member at large units and member at large units. I mean, obviously any member is a member, but it's, if you want to be consistent, I would say that for the, that first paragraph under amendments, uh, that the, also that uh, they send to the presidents of local leagues, chair of a member at large units, and members at large. And in the next paragraph, the presidents, of local, the presidents, the chairman of the units, and uh, shall notify the members of their well, and the board shall notify their respective leagues of the proposed amendments. Um, so. Deb just to make it consistent with the rest of the bylaws that you still include that wording. And, uh, and if we can have it for the vote, then people will know exactly what they're voting on. So I think, Debbie, you, you are declining uh, the suggestion to instruct the committee to, to, formulate, to formulate the changes, right? You, you want a- Well, it's only gonna be on this one amendment that it has to happen. Uh, the other parts of the bylaws already have been proposed. So why would you wanna uh, just not go ahead and include it? All right, when we, I, I'm going to say that, you know, when we come to uh, the voting and debate section on, well, of article 15, somebody needs to have crafted 
a proposed amendment and put it into the chat, please, since this is a little a little bit scrambled. So we also we also have Stacy Webb noting that our article eight needs member at large units added. Uh, oh, okay, but that will come up, folks. Yeah, that will come up during voting. So let's hold those. Uh, but uh, now I also want to comment on Article 15, folks, to let us not be confused that the amendment restricts, the article itself restricts proposals for changes to the bylaws to come from only a board member or now you're, you want to insert um, a member at large chair, but I'm pointing out to you, it does not provide for any member, any member anywhere to submit a proposal for amendment for a proposal for change to the bylaws directly. It must go through a board or it must go through the chair of the MAL as, as being proposed here. So let's be clear on that folks. All right. Uh, Joan, it seems to me we are ready for the uh, to vote to debate and vote on these articles. <laughs> would you agree? I would agree. Yes. All right. We're going and to do this we're going to do this now as opposed to this afternoon. Yes, because our planning team yesterday decided that uh, we really be believe it's best that since we have gone through the reading and the clarification, probably people are alert, ready to either propose an amendment or ready to vote. Okay. Uh, it is necessary on Article 1 uh, that we need to, we have to vote on Article 1 separately from others because I would invoke, invite a motion to amend Article 2 to be exactly consistent with the national bylaws. That is not a motion. I am inviting such a motion. Do you I want so to oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I so move, Ann Elwell, Southwest Missouri League. Is there a second? I second, Shirley Finger, Kansas City. All right, it has been moved and seconded to amend Article 1 to be exactly consistent with the national bylaws. Is there more discussion? Hearing none, I do. Uh, will those in favor of this amendment vote aye? Or, or I'm sorry, raise your hand. <laughs> Please lower your hand. And this requires a two thirds vote, remember. All right, thank you. So elections committee. Will those, in, will those uh, opposed to the amendment, raise your hand please. And the elections committee will tell us when the count is final. The motion carries as there were no, uh, uh, no no's. All right, thank you. All right, the, uh, the amendment has carried. Therefore, we shall move on to uh, a vote on article two, um, let's see, excuse me. Article, article five. Let's see, article three, am I right, Joan, on membership? Uh, yeah. yeah. I thought we had combined both of these, but I guess not. Yeah, we couldn't do that since Article 1 got amended. Okay. Um, Article 3. Okay. Joan, would you like to move for adoption of Article 3? On behalf of the board, I move that we adopt Article 3 as amended. Is there second. a I second Marge Bramer. Is there any discussion relating to the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion to adopt Article 3, raise your hand, please. Sorry, Evelyn, we had polls set up for these since oh. they required two thirds just to make it easier to get a final count. Well, then let's just start those now, Rachel. Thank you very much. So um, so we have just eliminated the, ra the raising of the hands for article this article that I just mentioned. <laughs> And Rachel, you take over and tell us what's going to happen. Okay, so we've got, uh, so as you'll see in the verbiage, if you are not a delegate, please do not vote in this poll. If you are a delegate, please do vote. You can either choose yes or no, and then hit submit. 
and we will have this pull up until either one minute has passed or everybody has cast their votes. All right, now one thing, Rachel, in the question here it says, so bylaws be amended as moved. And in this case, there was no amendment. So it's, it, it, can you quickly move it to shall the bylaws, bylaws be uh, adopted as presented? Are you able to change that verbiage? I am not able to. Okay. May we? Um, as, as you your, remember, yeah. we're 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 very restricted on how many polls we can use. So you just need to make sure that people know exactly what this particular vote is. We all we, well, we'll run out of polls if we if we go beyond giving very generic. Okay. Yeah, and I do think, since uh, Rachel, since this is not controversial, we'll just do with the hands, but we may need, we may need to do a poll, but let's see as we go through the bylaws. Thank you. So okay. I can, I can confirm that the, uh, the motion passed 100%. Oh, oh, thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> All right. So um, the motion to adopt Article 3 passed. And so we will move on to Article 5. Article 5. Um, Joan, is there a motion to adopt Article 5? I so on move. On behalf of the board, question? Oh, the, I was just going to I so move. Uh, on behalf of the board, I move that we adopt Article 5 as amended. Oh. Is there a second? Second. second. All right. It has uh, been... Nancy Price. I don't know who else did it. Okay. Thank you, Nancy Price. Uh, the um, motion to adopt Article 5 uh, was second. Oh, wait a minute. We passed that, didn't we? Not I'm Article sorry. 5. I've lost it. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. We're on Article 5. All right. The motion to adopt Article 5 has been uh, made and seconded. Is there discussion? There being no discussion, we will vote. All those in favor of adopting Article 5, uh, signify by raising your hand, please, for the Elections Committee. And will the Elections Committee tell me when you're finished counting? Again, we, we do have a poll here, if that would be simpler, since we need a two-thirds count. Well, thank you. I do think I, I do. don't. Has everyone held their hand up that's voting? Yeah, please keep your hand up if yeah. you are voting until we tell you that you can put it down. Yeah, it's we're just checking through. Okay. Uh, I would say we have a hundred percent voting. Yes. Okay. So I will cursory say all those um, opposed. Raise your hand. Okay. Please lower your hand if you voted pro. And so, but we will rely right. on okay. knowing it was 100%. <laughs> right. Thank you. All right. Uh, okay, Joan, do we have a motion for Article 6? On behalf of the board, I move that we adopt Article 6 as amended. Is there a second? Second, Second. Linda McDaniel. I uh, Seconded by Linda McDaniel of St. Louis. Um, is there discussion? Um, you know, I didn't, uh, the discussion, I have a question. I didn't write down how it was amended, but it was amended to include some verbiage about the member at large. Is that right? I just didn't know it had been amended. No. Was it not amended? Uh, Linda, who, who made the motion to- uh, I thought I did, but whoever, I don't know. I, I, Linda, do you, do you believe it was amended? Uh, I don't think it was. Okay, on page 18, mm -hmm. article 6B, if, if this is what you're talking about, it says, and it's about qualifications for board of directors to serve. This oh. person has to be, a, is that what you're talking about? 
Excuse me. I thought you meant that our proposed amendment was amended. So I beg I, my confusion. I'm oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah. I'm no. Sorry. All right. So it it um, it was moved and seconded to adopt Article Six as proposed. So all those in favor, raise your hand, please. The elections committee will tell you when to lower it. All hands are raised. However, we do have some people that are, are not showing up. They're visible, not visible. Uh, do you well, have a, still we still have a uh, we still have a two thirds majority, but there are a few people that are not showing up. Okay, I will. If for those, please lower your hands. If you are voting for for it or the amendment as proposed, lower your hand, please, because I'm now going to call for those voting against the amendment as proposed. And I would say there's probably not. Okay. All right. There are none. And, and those who maybe can't do it, you can do by chat. You can tell us um, yes by chat if you're not okay. able to. And there, and there are some who aren't delegates, I understand too. So that may be those. All right. So Article 6 is adopted as presented. So now um, we'll move on to Article 7. On behalf on behalf of the board, I move that we adopt Article 7 as amended. As amended. Second. Second. Ooh, go ahead. All right. It has been moved and second to adopt the amended article as proposed. It's been moved and seconded. Is there discussion? No. All right. There being none. Who we'll moved to second? Who seconded that motion? I, I did, but I think someone else did. Rachel Thompson. Uh, okay, that's, that's fine. That'll do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Louise is not hard to please. Okay. All right. So um, it's been moved and seconded to adopt Article 7 as proposed. All those in favor? please raise your hand and leave it raised until the elections committee asks you to lower. There's a, We had all all uh, all yeses. All right. I will call for those to uh, all those opposed to signify by raising your hands to confirm. Uh, I believe there are none. Is that correct, Carol? All right. Very good. Um, the um, motion to approve Article Seven as proposed has passed unanimously. We'll move on to Article 8, shown on page 20. On behalf of the board, I move that we adopt Article 8 as proposed. Second. Mary Lindsay, Kansas City. It has been moved and seconded to adopt Article 8 as proposed. Therefore, I, uh, is there any discussion? Um, there, yes? Is is. Should a uh, member at large be placed in there um, on the second line? President or co-president of each local league or member at large unit? Should that be recognized? Hmm. Let's see, I'm reading. Okay, now I'm reading the what is in bold because I think it's down there. Um, it's included in, look down at the bold part. The oh, bold yes, part. I see. I'm sorry. Because the bold, the bold paragraph will take completely replaced right. the first paragraph. 
All right. So uh, motion, uh, the, the motion, uh, we have a motion and a second, and we are in discussion. Is there further discussion? No further discussion. Will those in favor of adopting the um, article as proposed, raise your hand, keep it up until the elections committee tells us to lower. Evelyn, did you see the message from Kathleen that we have five minutes till our speaker will be joining us? I did not see that message. Thank you very much. Be aware, folks. I am not. I personally am not monitoring the the uh, chat. Um, we will finish this and then mm -hmm. move forward. So I think we're. Go ahead with the nose. Uh, yes. Uh, do we? There were a few people that didn't have their hand held up. I just want to make sure that they weren't oh, voting okay. no. I'm sorry, I hadn't called. <laughs> I lost my train of thought there. So all those opposed to Article 8, uh, signify by raising your hand, please, until the Elections Committee tells you to lower it. And if your hand is up electronically, um, the same button that raised your hand will lower it again. So if you raised your hand for yes, now you can lower it again as we count no votes to make okay. the election committee life easy. Yeah, and I did not find any no votes. So it, 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 we had a hundred percent on that. Oh, Linda McDaniel and Don oh. Wayne to lower your hands. Huh? Linda McDaniel and Don Wade. Thank you. And the elections committee will announce the results. Nancy Copenhaver, what were you saying? Linda McDaniel voted no. Is that what you said? Carol, I believe Linda McDaniel and Don Wade each voted yes. Okay. And her hands were still up. That's oh, what okay. Okay. So we, we are all, all yeses. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Now, given that um, we have three articles left, uh, as chair, I am announcing that we will resume voting on the bylaws after the presentation by our national president. The national president is um, scheduled to start with us at 1030. So, um, Anne, could you tell us what to expect about connecting to Dr. Turner? Well, she, Dr. Turner is with us now. So oh. exciting times here at the LWV Mo State oh. Convention. Um, Very good. But let's wait three minutes because some people are joining us on YouTube just for her um, keynote address. Yes. And, and if you're thinking of questions, you can use either the Q&A or the chat if you have a question for Dr. Turner. And Marilyn- Maybe you could take a quick break. <laughs> Uh, Marilyn McLeod, are you there? Are you ready to introduce Dr. Turner? I am. All right. So let's just, uh, 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 te Tech Meisters, when we're ready for Dr. Turner, please go directly to Marilyn McLeod and then she will introduce Dr. Turner. In the meantime, uh, could I say something? This is Mary Lindsay. You can very quickly. Um, I just discovered so that it will lessen the likelihood likelihood of people staying unmuted. If you want to speak, if you just push the the space bar, you have a temporary use of your mic, and then when you let go of it, I did not know that. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right. Oh, questions for Dr. Turner, by the way, should be on a national scope. And though she was really active in the uh, League of Women Voters of Iowa and now lives in Nebraska, she is not up on what our state legislature did recently and those actions. So uh, be nice to Dr. Turner and focus on what she is, president of the National League of Women Voters, uh, knows and cares about.
Good morning. It's my pleasure now to introduce our guest speaker, Dr. Deborah Turner. She is serving as the 20th president of the League of Women Voters of the United States and chair of the board of trustees of the League of Women Voters Education Fund. She was elected board president at the national convention in June, 2020, and will serve in this position until June, 2022. Dr. Turner first joined the league in 2010 when she became a member of the Des Moines Metropolitan League. She quickly advanced to president of her local league, co-president of her state league, and then to the national board of directors in 2016. She has served on the national finance and governments committee and chaired the national DEI committee. As chair of the DEI committee, Dr. Turner led the focus on organizational culture changes in the league's mission emphasizing not only racial equity, but also intergenerational dynamics, socioeconomic differences, gender identity, and interpersonal engagement. Dr. Turner's distinguished medical background began in the practice of gynecologic oncology and serving on the faculty of university programs. She practiced a gynecological oncology for 35 years, teaching residents and students at several universities. In 2015, she left active practice to become vice president of international medical programs of the outreach program and has participated in 12 medical missions to Tanzania among other international work. She currently serves as associate medical director of Planned Parenthood of North Central States. As if this wasn't enough for her resume, she earned a, a JD degree in 2007 received the Gertrude Rush Award from the National Bar Association in 2015. And in 2013, she was inducted into the Iowa Women's Hall of Fame. She lives in Nebraska and has two grown children. And we are so honored to have you here today, Dr. Turner. Thank you so much for that wonderful introduction. And thank you to the League of Missouri for having me today. I am really pleased to join you for your convention this morning in America's heartland. I share the roots of middle America upbringing with you and always enjoy the opportunity to connect with those who share the same struggles of our part of the world, but also share the wonder, the hope, the optimism and the can do spirit it has ingrained in all of us. Just so you know, I am an Iowa native born and raised in a small Northern Iowa town of Mason City, which is the river city of the, of the music man. I guess, yes, I am living proof that a simple corn fed Iowa kid can go far with a good foundation. And those are the values that the League of Women Voters of Missouri and the leagues of the Midwest bring and offer to the wider league. Yes, I'm Dr. Deborah Turner, president of your board of directors. I have selected by the membership at the 2020 National Convention last June. I've had the honor as noted of serving on the national board since 2016, but serving my first year as president in our 101st year has been challenging and exciting. On February 14th, 2020, our organization celebrated its 100th birthday. And a few weeks later, just as the primary season was ramping up, the coronavirus hit our nation and dramatically changed our lives and our work. We were looking forward to a dynamic and transforming new century of work, but we never imagined the challenges that, we are, that were immediately ahead of us. The first few weeks of the pandemic were a very scary time. Seeing cases rise daily, not fully understanding how to protect ourselves or how the virus was spread to simple things like where to acquire the right type of mask, what is social distancing, can I hug my children, and even how do I find toilet paper. We as a nation had to adapt, transform, and accept the fact that we were on a steep learning curve and knowledge changed daily as more information became available. We were forced to accept a rapidly changing environment and discard information and accept new information on a daily basis. We must remember, even in the beginning, Dr. Anthony Fauci didn't understand the importance of mask wearing. Our entire lives were upended and our league work was dramatically impacted as well. We were forced with some very critical questions. Would elections be postponed? 
Would voters have opportunities to cast an absentee ballot? What would it mean for the safety and security of our members and volunteers who would normally be out in their communities registering voters? Without in-person events and opportunities for registration drives, how many eligible voters would miss the opportunity to participate in the election? However, the virus unintentionally was only the first obstacle among new voter suppression issues in 2020. We faced more challenges ahead to ensure voters could participate in elections, including deliberate misinformation spread across social media, a lack of funding for the post office causing confusion and distrust of the mail system, and an exacerbation of our national poll worker shortage due to the pandemic. But the league rose to the occasion, just as women have done for centuries when there was a crisis. Our organization, in collaboration with many partners, stepped up leaned in and found new ways to ensure that voters were empowered. The country was in a time of transformation in how they worked and how they lived. We had to accept the fact that as time passed, more information was obtained and we adjusted our activities and behaviors as needed. The League has been on the road of change and discovery since its inception, but over the last five years, we have truly leaned into this work, starting with the transformation roadmap. It has not always been easy. It will not always be easy. But when 2020 exploded, we were prepared to pivot and transform on a dime. As voters spent more time at home in 2020 due to the pandemic and online, our election site, vote411.org, became a widely known source for the most up-to-date election information. With rules and deadlines changing daily in the early days of the pandemic, Vote 411 was often updated even before state resources were. More than 6 million users came to vote411.org for election information in 2020. And for the first time, the site was also available in Spanish. Our largest ever online marketing campaign reached nearly 15 million voters to further spread the word about our award-winning election information website. The League of Women Voters of Missouri was a vital part of this effort. According to our data from the post-election survey, leagues in Missouri registered nearly 4,000 voters just on the 411 platform alone and contacted nearly 3,000 voters with vital information to get out the vote. That is a salute to the League of, of Missouri. At the national level, the attacks on voter access in 2020 shaped much of our work and impacted voting rules in nearly every state. The league was part of more than 60, 60 state and federal lawsuits in more than 35 states to ensure voters had ex safe access to the ballot. With a winning record, we protected the rights of 20 million voters throughout our election related litigation. Our cases covered important issues such as establishing notice and cure processes waiving witness requirements for mail ballots and expanding the absentee excuse to cover more voters. We did all of this to ensure that voters did not have to choose between exercising their constitutional right to vote and risking their health and safety during the pandemic. And because of much of the work of the league and other many of our partners, we had the most safe, secure election ever in the history of the United States with the greatest turnout. Yet, since last November, we have seen hundreds of bills in state legislatures attempting to make voting more cumbersome. In the face of the record turnout of 2020, some lawmakers continue to work to silence the voices of eligible voters. We must not go backwards. All of the access we fought for in 2020 should be extended and made permanent to encourage greater participation in elections for years to come. So now with the 2020 elections behind us, and now that our organization is into our second century, what does it mean to be the League of Women Voters in 2021? How do we continue to navigate our nonpartisan policy in such hyperpartisan times? How do we continue our commitment to making diversity, equity, and inclusion part of our DNA and serve as good allies and leaders in the fight for social justice? How do we build on our experience and ensure the next generation of league leaders can carry this work forward for decades to come? Well, let me address a couple of these topics. First, our nonpartisan policy. It is the bedrock of our organization and our legacy. 
But being nonpartisan does not mean we are nonpolitical. Wanting every eligible voter to have equal access to the ballot box is not partisan. Wanting a robust democracy in which everyone has an equal voice and equal representation is not partisan. Wanting to see more elected officials that reflect the diverse makeup of our country is not partisan. It is American. Issues are not partisan. Our work is issue-based and we arrive at our positions based on careful study and input from our members and communities across the country. We never derive our positions from politicians and even when candidates or parties support the same issue, we never endorse them. Issues may evolve over the years, but our allegiance will always be first and foremost to the voters. If a party changes their position on an issue, that doesn't mean the league has to change our position to remain neutral. However, political connections and assumptions are made about us all the time, and they simply aren't accurate. Supporting the democratic processes of registering eligible voters and casting and counting ballots is seen by some as subverting one political party, even though these are sacred tools of our democracy. Likewise, empowering voters who previously have been left out of the process and supporting the anti-racism movement does not mean we are in allegiance with one ideologic segment of the American government. Rather, it means we are doing what we were founded to do, standing up for what is right. No party, let me say that again, no party has a claim on any particular issue. Sometimes a candidate or political parties agree with our position. They may even champion them, but that doesn't make the issue or the league partisan. We have seen an evolution of popular support and public opinion shift on issues over time. And the league has reevaluated and shifted priorities at different times. But the one thing, we have never compromised our values. And so when I think about what it means to be the league in 2021 and what it means to be successful, it's about doing our work to empower voters and demand, defend democracy and doing so unapologetically. It means supporting legislation that expands voting rights like the For the People Act and the John Lewis Voting Rights Advancement Act. It means advocating for fair redistricting processes and keep our that keep our communities together and advancing our people-powered fair maps program to include more voices in the process. It means committing to our communities and investing in the resources and information for which voters have come to rely on us. And as an organization, it means growing leaders for the future. Our work will never be complete or successful if we cannot come together across generations. As league leaders, we must respect each other for who we are and from whence we came. The league is a place where young members and older members can learn from one another and change this country for the better by using skills and energy from all generations. I am easily considered one of the older members, but most of my dearest friends and colleagues, both at work and in the league, are decades younger than me. Those differences don't stymie our interaction, but enhance it. Just remember that working across generations, working across ages actually expands our minds and our ideas. New ideas are what will make us grow. And this is what comes from working across generations. Leadership is not tied to an age bracket. It is tied only to experience, passion, and knowledge, qualities that are present in all generations. It is time, time to stop relegating younger members to menial positions and learn to graciously, but wisely, pass the baton when the time is appropriate. But in the same breath, I beg the younger members, please do not throw out the older gray-haired members like me with the bathwater. Their knowledge and experience are vital to moving democracy forward also. There is a place for everyone in our league. On that note, I want to congratulate the League of Missouri on engaging with communities of color, low-income communities, and college and high school students to get out the vote during the past year. It has been great. At the national level, we also need a diversity of voices in our leadership to direct this organization for the challenges we will be facing in the years to come. The National Board of Directors is always looking for future league leaders to serve. Our nominating committee will be hard at work 
meeting with league leaders and putting together a slate of candidates for officers and directors on the national board. As members, we will elect our next board in June 2022. I hope some of you will consider applying or nominating a fellow leaguer. And also remember there are other ways to step up to participate, particularly in task force and committees that work across leagues, across the nation and across generations. So keep your eyes open and listen for these opportunities. We need the voices of league members from the Midwest to share in this decision-making process. As many of you may have heard me say, the League of Women Voters is my endorphin. I have never come away from a league encounter not feeling energized. I am ready and willing to work with you. I am a team builder and a collaborator. All of us have a role in building our second century league. America and the league is standing on the precipice of a bright future and we will take a great diverse committed league to embrace that future. We can fly or we can fall. It is clear to me that league is ready to soar. So I am excited to join you in this exciting future. As long as the tax on voting rights continue, the league will be here providing voters with timely and accurate information, advocating in the halls of power, marching in the streets when it's safe to do so and fighting in the courtrooms. I know that you have not been deterred in your efforts to create a more perfect democracy in Missouri. You're, you fought hard to protect clean elections and fair maps in your state. And although you did not get the results you wanted with amendment three in the last election, I have every confidence in your ability to keep up the good fight. At National, we are here to partner with you to continue moving the dial on fair maps, voting rights, social justice, and democracy. Due to your hard work and that of league members and staff across our great nation, the league is currently in a strong financial position. So soon, each of your states, our states will be receiving some special funding to be used by you as you see fit to continue your exemplary work. I thank you so much for your commitment to our organization and for your time and dedication to empowering voters and defending democracy this year and every year. We are proud of you, Missouri, and I am proud to see the Midwest continuing on a course of league success and growth. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Turner. That was perfect and so inspiring for the work that we do and will continue to do. We greatly appreciate your time. Um, I don't know if you would take any questions. Does anyone have any questions they have? I'd like to kick off the questions yeah. with yeah. appreciation for the past through grants that the National League has been able to give Missouri both our C3 and C4 organizations, it's very helpful. And as you know, our priority for the next 12 months is fair maps, uh, transparency in the redistricting process. We appreciate the organizers working on this, but how do you see the Midwest in this whole process as every state rushes to use the census data that now won't be released till fall? Yeah, we, you know, we were very optimistic, you know, in the beginning about fair maps, and we haven't lost our optimism, just to let you know. Uh, we are also very realistic. We know that as we look at how uh, districts are drawn in some areas and how state houses are lined up at the current time, there's going to be a difficult fight, but there are going to be some states that we think we can win in. So I would like to uh, take this message back, and I think that uh, Selena who you know is the head of Fair Maps and is our attorney will be coming up, will be basically putting out a summary of where we're at and where we're going very shortly. So I will make sure that you get this. As far as a little historical situation, I know sometimes as a league, we feel we really struggle in areas like this, like what is our power? Can we do something? So your neighbor to the North, Iowa, has one of the redistricting, um, programs that is not legislative. And it's one of the kind of ideal ones that people look to when they're building them in their other states. And I don't think most people recognize the fact, the only reason Iowa has the redistricting process that it has now is simply because of the League of Women Voters of Iowa. They helped author it, they helped push it through, and they made it happen. So 
that goes to show that, you know, league has more voice and more power than we can imagine. And these things can be done. So just remember that it keeps you, it keeps you hopeful. So thank you. <laughs> and Velma Bailey has a question about what is being done to increase membership nationwide to address the different generations. How does the league nationwide look at um, that challenge? Yes, there are a couple of things that are being done. First of all, there are several states across the country who have started developing um, emerging leaders, but more intergenerational leagues. Some uh, states have like units in colleges. Some even have some units in the high school that don't necessarily operate as a pure league the way we do now, but they have association with the leagues and they have special duties or opportunities that they give them. Some of them have high school students and uh, college students that intern with their league members. That's one thing. But the other thing that we're doing is one of the critical pieces of our organizing group, now that we have the organizing department, is that they are working with states to start building out ways to reach out to other uh, groups and particularly to younger groups. So that's gonna be a real big force in our uh, intergenerational work. Over the next couple of years, we are looking at putting together potentially a task force or a lead group that crosses across the nation with everybody bringing their ideas together and sharing the programs that are out there and being used because there are a lot of programs that the, but unfortunately right now you know a league in utah may not know what a league in new jersey is doing and a league in missouri may not know what a league in california is doing when there may be programs that could be beneficial or that you could change to work in your own area. So we are going to be working on that and intergenerational conversation is one of my main things as the president of the league. So you're gonna see some stuff coming through, okay? Excellent. I'd like to recognize Nancy Price who has a question. Uh, no, I just wanted to say thank you for um, adding all this positive energy to our day. Um, it's a Saturday and now we're all charged up. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, and Angie Dunlap has a question. When our senators call HR1 a partisan power grab, what should be our response? Our, we come back to that, that issue that issues are not partisan. This is about voting rights. And we, we just have to keep the mantra that, you know, we're talking about voting rights and the bedrock of democracy is voting and access to the ballot. And so it's one of those things where when they aim low, we aim high, and we keep coming back to issues are not partisan, issues are not partisan, voting rights are not partisan. And um, if you keep saying that, people hear it and they understand it. And there's some great messaging, by the way, that our uh, communications department at the National League has. So reach out to Sarah, okay, or Sarah Courtney, or to Kayla Vicks, and tell them specifically you would like some really clear messaging around them. Let them know what your senator's saying and ask them to get back with you some direct messaging that you can use and they will do it for you, okay? Excellent, any other questions? Uh, Joan, or excuse me, this is Evelyn. Um, I saw um, something in the chat about, uh, about whether or not the National League will have a drive to increase members. So Dr. Turner, is there anything, any help for local leagues um, to recruit members in areas where we're not represented? You, uh, I guess that's kind of a, from what I get a two prong question. One is just increasing membership in general. And um, th there's gonna be some stuff coming out from the organization. Once again, the organization department is becoming really a critical part of the National League. And we are right now developing some programs and some messaging to reach out to groups that have been underrepresented or underserved in the league. And so you'll be seeing that coming forth. The other issue or one area is that the Diversity, Equity and Inclusion Committee of the League of Women Voters at the national level has become very, very active and are doing a lot of work. The chairman of that is Tony Zimmer, okay? And if you reach directly out to Tony, she will also lead you to some really good information that you can use and resources. So our organization department and our DEI 
committee are both working on these issues. You will see us moving on this. This is like one of our main goals. With the fact that, like I told you, we're in pretty good financial situation right now. So we are going to be putting more money into these efforts when the past we have always kind of, yes, you know, you're you, some of you have been leaguers for a long time. And even you new leaguers, we always kind of work from this concept of scarcity. Like we're a little bit worried to put in the resources because we think tomorrow we won't have money for milk. Okay. Well, right now we have money for milk and we've come to find out that if we reach out and really use our resources, that we actually get more resources, more resources back to us. So that's what we're going to be doing. You're going to see more money coming from the national out to the field so that you can help with these programs and these outreach programs. Mm. Thank you very much. We are trying to pack a two-day convention into just one day virtually, but we really appreciate your time. Let's all have another round of applause for Dr. Turner. Yes, for jazz hands. Okay. Well, thank you very much, and I hope to see some of you at council, okay? okay. Yes. All right. Thank you Bye. so much. You're welcome. Bye-bye. It's been Bye. a great morning. Thank you very much. So we will resume to our order of business and we will resume uh, voting on the bylaws. So uh, Joan, are you there? Joan Gentry, are you, maybe she's gone off to lunch, do you think? I'm, I'm muted. Um, I'm here, I just had to get myself off of, of uh, All okay. right. I, I, would, I do want to point out um, that in the chat, we have had um, two things that have appeared that, and I know one of them, I, I'm not quite sure what Cheryl had, Cheryl had mentioned something, Barnes about would like a global motion on housekeeping. I didn't know if that actually, Cheryl, if you would speak to that, whether that actually referred to um, what we're doing with the bylaws. I was just thinking that if there are any other elements in the bylaws, which we, we may not be reviewing today, if we just made that a way that any time we address local league presidents, we would add members at large units uh, and members at large. That way you would be able to uh, go back through and just add that just as a matter of course, just like you know, capitalizing letters. So we acknowledge all three uh, classes of membership so that uh, we just know that it's a done deal, that local league presidents includes the other two. Uh, our parliamentarian will have to rule on that. So Debbie Wade Howard, what is your response? Debbie, Debbie, are you there? Here, I was just unmuting. Um, yeah, I, I, if, if that's what you want, that any, well, I, I, I don't know. I suppose anywhere you mention in the bylaws something to do with local league presidents, um, that you would also put uh, the chair of a, a member at large unit. Uh, probably not member at large unit members at large because basically the state board is responsible for the members at large and uh, I don't think you need to put that in the by that all has to go in the bylaws because it's just obviously anything that we do as a state board um, the we are responsible for making sure our members at large are included so, uh, because there may be some things that uh, local league presidents and uh, member at large unit chairs will be responsible for that members at large would not really be involved in, but that through the state board, they would be taken care of. Uh, we're, we're, we're the governing board. But, persons for the members at large as a local league president is a governing person for their members and the unit at large is a governing uh, chair is a governing person for their members. Okay. Uh, Cheryl. So I, I it, our parliamentarian has rules 
that such a motion would be legitimate, but we need the motion crafted. So um, let us, um, do you have it crafted, Cheryl? Has anybody crafted such a motion that would be universal in application relating to the members at large and the members at large units? And Joan and Marge, you've been, you've worked over these bylaws pretty good. Do you have a comment about that suggestion? Um, I personally feel like this would be the logical way to go about um, doing the task at hand. That would also negate the need for a new amendment on 15. Amendment 15, I would think that, that this would be simply as we put together the final um, 2021 bylaws, that that would be um, a standard we would follow. Mark, what do you think? Yeah, um, Joan, maybe yes. you have maybe you have in your mind the the uh, the correct motion. Um, do you believe you could very quickly articulate such a motion? Uh, actually, my brain is kind of following on everything that I'm trying to cover here. Let's go back to Cheryl. If you could just. Um, um, put something, Cheryl, could you put something very quickly? Do you think that move that when the bylaws mention league presidents, it includes member at large units would do it? Uh, may, well, may I, I don't think that's really be enough, Cheryl. Let me try it. Maybe a motion, uh, a motion to authorize the bylaws committee to include members at large and members at large units in any article, I'm trying to say where it's appropriate. I can't get the language about where it's appropriate because the, the president's is too limiting, Cheryl. There are other occasions. Um, Marge, do you have a thought? You know, we want to authorize, we want a motion to authorize the bylaws committee I would move that we authorize the bylaws committee to include the term chairs of member at large units in any place in the amendments in the bylaws, I'm sorry, that mentions presidents of local leagues. Would that work? And I second that motion. I think it's perfectly good. <laughs> All right. We have I'm a typing it. Yeah. So yeah, if someone could say that again, I can um, share my screen and have that on the screen for everyone to see. It's in the chat, Rachel. And Marge and Joan, uh, what about the members at large? So have we overlooked any place relating to just the individual members at large? If not, let's just leave it just specific to this. I can't I think, think that. I think that Debbie's uh, comment that the board is responsible for those members because they're members of the state right. only right. and With, not it, whereas the presidents and chairs are responsible for their members. Well, yes, but I just thought there were other references, but I, I drop it, you know, no, I, I uh, drop all mention. <laughs> okay, thanks. There we go. Uh, Marge, do you um, want to change what Rachel has typed? Any Rachel, can you change what's typed there if Marge needs to tweak it? Absolutely. Okay, Marge, is there any tweaking necessary? I think it's fine. Perhaps capitalized chairs. I don't know. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. This is Kathleen Boswell, and I call the question. All right, we've had a um, call the question. Therefore, is there a second to the call the question? It will not be debatable. We'll move exactly to calling the question and voting. Cheryl Barnes, uh, I second. I, I, okay, I have a question about the language. Uh, move to authorize bylaws committee to include the term chairs of member at large units that mentions presidents of local, something's missing. Mm -hmm. uh, I, oh. I I think you're right. Missed, missed, yeah, I think you guys. There we go. 
All right, but excuse me, but we, we do have a motion on the floor. We must vote on whether this is about, <laughs> if you say that's okay as it is, you will vote yes, if you believe it's okay if it is. If it's not okay, you will vote no. We will go back to discussing this. Sorry, so, so should I delete... Should I delete that addition that I made after the motion was made and seconded? Um, Cause I added this in bylaws after. Yeah. Okay, yeah, please. So folks, all we're voting on is we're voting on whether to vote on this, that's all. So, so oh. working on it, vote no. All right, all those uh, in favor of the call, to, the call. <laughs> The calling of a question, which means all of, of going directly to a vote, raise your hand. The elections committee will announce when you need to lower your hand. Uh, we're gonna have to do a poll on this, or or clarify what we're voting on, because you got about half exactly. voting one way and half another. So, um, okay, I'm gonna relaunch. I can relaunch that bylaws. And, and uh, Evelyn, please make it exactly clear what we're voting on, or, and what if if you vote yes, what do we do next? If you vote no, what do we do next? I was hope I thought I had done that because yeah. I here we go now. There was a, um, while we're voting, uh, Kathleen wants us to vote on the, the, she wants us to vote on what was, on the, on the motion that was prepared. She just wants us to what vote. What you're voting on is closing debate on the motion on the floor. You, you are voting to, to have no more discussion about this, of this wording. That's what you're voting on. And so that means we can't go back and put in the bylaws, correct? Yes. I'll withdraw my call oh. the question. This is yeah. Kathleen. I right. like the better wording. So yeah. let's get that too. fixed. I withdraw. All right. The, um, the call to question was withdrawn by Kathleen Boswell. So we are now back into a uh, debate over the um, motion, the motion. I guess it was moved and said, I guess I would recommend that we take the S off the word mentions, if we add in bylaws that mention the president. Mm -hmm. So it would or say- you could say in articles of the bylaws, <laughs> that would make it clearer. Okay, in articles of the bylaws that mention presidents of local leagues. Very good. Do we need, do we need to hyphen it? member at large yes 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 and thank you in other places in the bylaws we've capitalized the first letter of m a and l i believe is that correct yeah, there that's correct yes should bylaws sure. committee be capitalized no no i don't think so uh, no, it's no. It's specific now so Marge Bramer, is that your motion that you are bringing to the floor? Yes. All right, is there a second? I second. Cheryl, okay. you can go. Yeah, thank you. The motion you are viewing has been moved and seconded. We are now moving to, to discussion, all right? To discussion, debate, so, uh, or clarification, whatever. I have, I have Marilyn McLeod, Columbia, I just have one concern that this is a universal change. Is there any place in the bylaws where this would not be appropriate? No. No? Okay. Yeah, but I would assume, um, uh, well, what's missing there, I guess, is um, some limitation or something, parameters to uh, their judgment to authorize, we're authorizing them to include the term do you want to add the words where appropriate at the end? You know, if you, uh, we're not telling them to put it just absolutely everywhere. We're telling them where appropriate to put it, I guess. I think we're covered because 
under memberships, when we added members at large and some of those places, we aren't referring to the president or the chair. We're just referring to any member who is a member of a local league, an MAO unit, or is a member at large. So I think if we're limiting it to articles that mention president specifically, adding chairs of member at large units would not create a problem. All right, and for those delegates who do not know what a member at large member is, a member at large is, that's a person who lives in an area where there is no local league. That person then is invited to send a check to the state league, to the Missouri State League, send it to our joint office. That check is for the state dues of $20, the national dues of $32 but doesn't pay anything to any local league. That's why they're called a member at large. They're not a member of a local league, but yet they pay dues to the state and to the national league. So that's what um, we're talking about, if you don't know. Evelyn, we have a couple questions. Uh, should we uh, put quotation marks on chairs of member at large units or whatever that term is? Uh, that's one question. And should the units be also capitalized in the, uh, in the motion, the word units? Marge, would you answer that? I, and you don't need to do all that because this is just a, a housekeeping thing. The committee knows what you're talking about. Uh, it doesn't matter. Right. Oh, good answer. All right, is there, now I've, I've neglected to go pro and uh, con. Is there, is there anybody who wants to speak against this motion as written, just against it? I, I can't speak to that. Um, Linda McDaniel does, however, hand, have her hand up as well, Evelyn. All right, Linda? Yeah, I was just uh, sort of confused about where this statement is gonna be. It does not, I don't think does is not as an amendment to Article Three or Ten or whatever. It's uh, it's a housekeeping uh, motion to the bylaws committee. It's just going to be in the minutes of the annual meeting. It's going to be a direction to the bylaws committee. Okay, okay, that's that's. I mean, that's good. I just was confused because. <clears throat> We're sort of still in the in the bylaws and haven't done, I think, a, a, a Article Ten yet. So no, we haven't finished the articles we're voting on. This just came up to make yeah. the process move more smoothly. Because okay, thank now, you. Now we won't have to amend an article just for this purpose. Just because right. it's left out, we don't have to amend individual articles. Uh, Mary Lindsay has her hand up. All right. Um, I understood earlier that there was discussion of three different categories, um, leagues, member at large units, and members at large. So does this cover all three of them? This motion does not relate to members at large because members at large are taken care of by the state board and the state board already it just wouldn't make any sense. This is just for member at large unit chairs equal to pro local league president chairs. Yeah, it had been decided, Mary, that this would be restricted to to this what you see there. We we are not uh, we have not in this today in this session discovered an omission relating to just the members at large who are not part of units. So I, I do remember I mentioned one time, but other than that, not. I Nancy, Nancy Copenhaver has her hand up. Okay. I, I would like us to go ahead and vote on this and, and allow the committee to do the adjusting they need to do. I will remind you that an hour, over an hour ago, I suggested that we do this. <laughs> and we wasted an awful lot of time. Right. Thank you, Folks Nancy. Go on. Let's do, I, I totally agree with that. I am closing debate. I'm closing debate. And all those in favor uh, of the motion as shown on the screen, please lift your hand. The elections committee will tell you when to lower it. And this motion only requires a majority vote.
Uh, motion has passed. Thank you. All right, so now we will resume with um, voting on Article 9. It is at the top of page 23. Joan, do you have a motion regarding Article 9? On behalf of the board, I move that we adopt Article 9 as proposed. All right, there is, uh, is there a second? Second the motion, Laura Mount, Marcus Mountjoy, KC. Thank you. It has been moved and seconded to adopt Article 9 as presented as, as proposed. As, All, as amended, as, as amended, as yeah. proposed, yeah. Thank you. Uh, as, who, as who seconded the motion? Laura Mountjoy. Um, KC League. I'm sorry, I didn't catch that name. It's Laura, L-A-U-R-A. -A. My last oh. name is Marcus. Okay, I Joy. okay. Uh, all right, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor of the motion, please raise your hand and leave your hand up until the elections committee asks you to lower it. Motion has passed. All right, thank you. The motion has passed. Therefore, we will proceed to Article 10, bottom half of page 21, workbook one. Joan, do you have a motion? Yes. On behalf of the board, I move that we adopt Article 10 as amended. I second, Angie Dunlap, Metro St. Louis. The motion has been made and seconded. Is there discussion? There being no discussion, we will vote. All those in favor of the motion, lift your hand and leave it, leave it lifted until asked to lower it. Motion has passed. All right, thank you, Elections Committee. Um, now we're moving on to article, um, 11. So, um, Joan, is there a motion relating to Article 11? On behalf of the board, I move that we adopt Article 11 as amended. All right. Is there a second? I'll second, second that. Neely Myers, Greater Joplin area. All right. Thank you, Neely. The motion has been seconded. Is there a discussion? There being no discussion, we will vote. All those in favor of uh, Article 11 as proposed, lift your hand. Do not lower it until asked to do so by the election committee. Motion has passed. All right, thank you. Now we'll move on to Article 15, Joan. Um, are you ready to present Article 15? And may I clarify to all those delegates that anything, anything in Article 15 that you believe omits the member at large chairs erroneously has been taken care of already by the passage of the Universal Amendment. So, but Joan, please, do you yes. have a on behalf of the board, I move that we adopt Article 15 as amended. All right. Is there a second? This is Carolyn Spence-Cagra from Tri Lakes. I second it. Thank you, Carol. So the motion's been uh, made and seconded. Is there discussion? There being no discussion, we will vote. All those in favor of Article 15, please raise your hand and leave it there until asked to lower it. Motion has passed. Okay, I, sh I should ask though, for those against it, please raise your hand to just- uh, uh, They are all, all, all raised. Unanimous, yeah, just checking there, Carol. <laughs> all right, thank you. Thank you, Elections Committee. That was an excellent job throughout uh, that process. So, uh, 
Joan, are you agreed that we have concluded the present yes. and voting on the bylaws? All right. We have, con we have concluded and um, we will make the recommended changes concerning referrals to the mal units as necessary. Very good idea. And thank you for that suggestion, Cheryl. All right, we'll move on the agenda and um, which the next thing on the agenda is the state president's report. I do want to refer all delegates to my extended report, which appears in um, uh, book three. Evelyn, Evelyn, yeah. I think it's the program. Oh, proposed program. That's well, there. Thank you very much. Let me, you know what? I have lost my agenda here. The presentation of the program, right? Okay, thank you so much. I, I lost that sheet. All right, Nancy Miller had been scheduled to present the program today. Uh, she is ill, she has suddenly become ill. She may be watching us, but um, Marilyn McLeod has kindly uh, agreed to share responsibility with me for presenting the program. What we are about to see are the slides prepared by Nancy. So I don't think we can go wrong. So um, Anne, are you navigating the slides for us? Um, that would be Rachel. Rachel, all right. All right, Marilyn, are you there? I am here. All right. How about I start and we'll see where you chime in. Okay. Okay. Going to be a place. So uh, thanks to Nancy. We want you to know that based on program planning responses from Missouri leagues, the state board recommends retaining all current state positions in the areas of government, justice, natural resources, and social policy. The state board recommends a league-wide campaign for making democracy work, voting rights, improving elections, campaign finance, money in politics, and redistricting. Local league boards and voting members sent recommendations for changes and additions to the program to the state board at least three months <coughs> prior to the convention. The Missouri Board of Directors considered the recommendations and formulated a proposed program. Any recommendations for the program submitted to the board of directors at least three months prior to the convention, but not proposed by the board, may be proposed for consideration and approved for consideration by a majority vote of delegates at this convention. The inclusion in the program <coughs> So those things voted to be considered will be included in the program that's voted on this afternoon. <coughs> Marilyn, I think you're yes. going to have to take over. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Um, let's see. Is this slide number four? Uh, it would be. Okay. Yes. Yes, it is. Okay. Um, Hmm. The board recommended program with board approved additions is listed on pages 10 to 13 of the workbook. Um, you'll see the individual program statements on the slides and I'll point out the changes in bold type that have been proposed. So I guess start going through the slides and we'll see the. And Marilyn, I think it's a good time to mention that everything you know, everything that's bolded is what's new. And everything that's being proposed is new to be incorporated in the Guide to State Action. <clears throat> Marilyn, uh, let's make clear that everything being proposed in the bold language is simply consistent with a national position or an existing state position. So it's simply incorporating important, shall we say, details that have been missing in the past. Marilyn, did I state it accurately? Uh, sounds good to me. <laughs> All right. Yeah. 
Thank you. <laughs> um, Marilyn, one, yes. one clarification. Uh, the, the material in brackets are being deleted. Is that Deleted, correct? right. Yes. That's what I would assume, right. And what's bold. So does this go any farther? Are there more slides to review? Yes, yes. Okay. Yes, do you want me to just cycle through them? Yes, yes. So we're looking for bold items in bold. So here we are. Or okay. anything bracketed. And, and if they're bracketed, they would be removed, right? So, um, And these are in workbook one. So if it's easier for you to follow in your workbook, I mean, what you see on the screen is already is in your workbook. You can look at either place. Yeah. So these would be adding these uh, sentences to the position. So uh, continue on. Okay. Keep. And here under juvenile justice, if you back up there a moment at the end, adding the phrase without racial or cultural bias. Marilyn, uh, Linda McDaniel has her hand, hand raised. Oh, okay. Linda, what is your question? Are you muted? No. Uh, yeah, I was just wondering, how are we gonna vote on these? Are we going to <clears throat> review all of them? I mean, you know, put them forth right now. Uh, then we would see about if there's any discussion on them. And then we would, are we going to vote on uh, the uh, proposed program as recommended for the board as one unit? Um, yes. yes, yes, that would be this afternoon. So at this yes. time, it's just time for clarification okay. or questions. Thank you, thank you. Okay. Yes. Uh, Nancy, for those who have attended other conventions, they will recognize how <clears throat> how Nancy was prepared to go through all of uh, go through the entire program that we are going through right now. Uh, she would have taken any questions relating to clarification, any any questions uh, that would result in clarification of what was said there. But she was prepared that when everybody when we had finished clarification. She was prepared to move for adoption by acclamation the entire program, since it didn't include anything new from anywhere, just updating verbiage. And that she would move for adoption by acclamation. Someone would need to second that, and then we would vote on it this afternoon. That is the league tradition to give people time, members, delegates time to consider what was presented in the morning as program? Uh, you can't really vote by acclamation on your program. There has to be an official vote. Then uh, people need to understand what we're voting on here is what we call the program in brief, because all the positions and stuff are in our guide to state action so that you won't see everything in the position in brief that's part of the position, but you're voting to maintain to keep the position as uh, and the ones that have been uh, proposed to be amended so but normally you have to vote on each area separately that you want to keep it but you can do whatever you want but now i'm aware of that practice we were hoping you would agree to let us uh, vote by acclamation given that that everything was totally consistent but no what you couldn't not call it a vote voting by acclamation means you don't take a vote voting on the whole program uh up or down instead of voting individually you can do that then you can say vote to adopt the whole program by a majority vote uh, if you want to do that, but you can't, if you say vote by acclamation, it means there's no vote that everybody agrees and there's no vote. You can't do that for program. You could do that for your uh, nominations, but you can't do that for program. All right, uh, Marilyn, uh, yes. let's, let's move to, well, I mean, Marilyn, okay. we have yes. several questions. Yes. Um, the thing uh, about this, as Debbie said, this is the 
brief version. The more extensive version are included in our guide to state action. These were, you know, when you, you see the brief statement, sometimes it doesn't give a, a lot of information obvious for obvious reasons, but can, these were can. suggestions to uh, give a little bit more body to, but they're taking uh, for the most part um, language from the longer version of um, guide to state action. And, can we and go I back and review the voting rights one? Okay. See the slide on this. Okay. Well, ex except could we could we get all the well? We're still on voting rights, aren't we? Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Go ahead, please. What was your question? Well, I was just uh, because I thought in the uh, uh, booklet it said no no excuse absentee voting was highlighted in dark because it wasn't in the current thing and oh, either okay. by mail or in person okay but it's there that's okay it's there i okay. just want to be sure it was there okay and okay. and we have a question regarding gun control um and they're referring to local control since urban areas aren't hampered we do not have a local control position we the columbia league wanted to have a, a, to do us to find a study somewhere else on local control so we could advocate for local control. There wasn't an adequate one. So the Columbia League is taking this study on and hopefully in two years, we can bring it up as a concurrence for the state league, just to answer that question. Thank you. Ruth Millage also has her hand up in the, um, she may have a question. Ruth? Yes. Um, <coughs> This is under voting rights. Um, it says support of no excuse absentee voting, either by mail or in person. Do we mean that either or do we mean both by mail and in person? I would assume that means either one. Okay, either one means one or the other. You cannot have both. Well, you, you are not allowed to vote by mail. Or if you voted in person, you're not allowed to have voted by mail. So that's, that's the way the law reads. You can either vote one way or the other. You, if you vote by mail, you can't then go to the polls and vote in person. So we're, <clears throat> we're not is, supporting allowing people one or the other we're allowing people their choice of both correct that's yeah. right. correct okay i understand now sorry yeah. for that uh this is kathleen farrell from st louis grammatically speaking that functions as a phrase and therefore all things are included in it so it's not either by mail or in person. It's ab it's absentee voting either by one of those two methods, all as one phrase. Well, the we can update the grammar. I think the intent is uh, the ability to to do yeah. no excuse absentee yeah. voting. So uh, that was one of the things that uh, Nancy Miller said that you know we can we can clean up the grammar right. if, if that's but an issue. In this case, sometimes grammar functions as content. And in this case, this grammatical setup functions as that content. Now, so, and it was also in the convention rules that anything we do, folks, uh, we're going to, we're going to fix the grammar when we actually uh, insert these documents into the guide to state action. So, all right, any other on uh, this voting rights or Chef sure. Maryland? Let me just ask Kathleen uh, Farrell. So, how should that be? Should it be expressed in a different way? Is there a missing comment? No, no. I'm saying the way it is expresses um, exactly what we want. My okay. point is that sometimes grammar equals content. That we shouldn't, you know, trivialize grammar because sometimes where a comma is placed changes the meaning. 
in oh, this yes. case, the way it is, it's most important that the grammar match the intent. Okay. All right. Thank you. Unless there uh, is something new. Denise Lieberman has her hand up. Okay. Denise? Whoops. Hey everybody, um, I just had a quick question about that final bullet at the bottom. It's more of an, it's an inquiry um, more than anything. Support providing privacy accommodations for visually impaired voters. And I guess I just wonder about the thinking behind that. Um, why, uh, I, in other words, why only supporting accommodations for visually impaired voters as opposed to supporting accessibility for all voters with disabilities? Um, I guess why the targeting of visually impaired voters compared to other I, kinds of accessible voting issue practices? I can speak to that. We have a member who is visually impaired and she has um, accommodations at her home where she could, if it were allowed, vote remotely, which is what military sure. people are allowed to do. And she would like to be able to do that because currently she has to take someone with her. So she feels she should have the same right to mark her ballot in secrecy. Sure, of course, I, I completely understand that. And, and obviously current law and the current machines allow visually impaired voters to do that. What I, I'm not discounting the need to protect visually impaired voters, I'm saying why only visually impaired voters and not other voters with disabilities who need accommodations. I, I guess why the targeting of that? And that, that was my only inquiry, but I'll, um, mm -hmm. it, I'll stop there. Uh, Denise, Denise, I will say this is, th these are nothing new. None of these are new. Okay. They've just been taken out of this guide to state action and put okay. in something that that's easily accessible for all our members. So it's okay. not like that's a new policy yeah. or we no. just picked it out. Yeah. But it's something to consider later on. I'm going to, ha I need a gavel. <laughs> yeah, uh, Denise, the answer is that whoever made this proposal just neglected to include the others. That's all, you know, but but since it has not been prepared and circulated, I'm afraid it's just omitted for the time being. Okay. I understood. I was, I was just looking right. for Thank you very much. explanation. Thank uh, you so I much. Like, okay. I feel like we've spent enough time on this. May we proceed with the next one? Yeah. Continue. Okay, we, that was added racial or cultural bias to to accommodate our DEI and um, Okay, continue. Continue. Okay. And um, I do not recall if that was just added or uh, is part of the, uh, I think it was added for pre-K. Well, that, that is an addition uh, that accommodates what the convention did last year. Yeah. Okay. It, it's actually already in the Guide to State Action, but this okay. is another to legitimize the inclusion. Okay, okay. It just brings it up to the, the short form. Yes, yes. Yes. You think it should say grade 12? Through grade 12. Can we uh, do that? Well, I this this is the custom. I've I've looked at a lot of information and this is this is how it's expressed. <laughs> okay. 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 All right. Is are there, any more? No, no, I think they meant grade 12, isn't it? Or I know, I know they meant grade 12, you know, K through high school is what we're talking about there. But I, I think we can insert the word grade in there without mm -hmm. violating any procedural. <laughs> okay, yes. Yes, whoever. Sounds that's reasonable. That was spoken by Louise Wilkerson who will supervise uh, the updating of the guide to state action. So thus spoke Louise. Moving on. Okay. Continue. 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 I think that's it. Okay. All so right. those those are all on the 
um, changes to the short version of the guidelines. And so Marilyn, now is the time, which with Debbie's advice, our parliamentarian's guidance, mm -hmm. we need a motion to, we're not gonna vote on it now, but we do need a motion to adopt the proposed program as a whole and a second to that motion. Is some anybody prepared so that we don't have to vote on anything individually? That is the idea. Okay. So is there anyone who wants to sub, uh, move? I'll, I'll so move, Marilyn McLeod. All right, is there a second? I'm Catherine second. Stinger, St. Louis, I second. Thank you very much. It's been moved and seconded and it will be taken up this afternoon for a vote. All right. So we will now move on to um, the uh, recommended concurrences. And so uh, do we have slides for that? Yes. Thank you. We'll have to really thank Nancy Miller, won't we? <laughs> she did a good job for us here. Thank yeah. you. Yes, okay. Now the proposed concurrences are shown on page 14 of workbook one. Now, so let's take them in order. Let's see here. Let me see what, what, how many slides she's got on this. All right, the first, uh, we, I guess we'll see the next slide, which is about, there is a proposed concurrence on voter representation. Madam Chair, would it be appropriate that we start our lunch break now before we get into this, since it is just about a minute before that time? Thank you very much. That is a very good suggestion, Nancy. Let's do break for lunch. And uh, now we are running behind. But I um, am I correct that people do want a 30 minute lunch hour? You don't want to reduce the lunch hour, do you? No. <laughs> Nancy does not. So we will take our 30 minutes break. And now please don't log out. Don't log out. You can maybe stop the video, mute yourself, but do we will resume promptly at 1215. Thank you. Evelyn, can I say something? Sure. Uh, I just wanted to, uh, this is a follow up on discussions last night that we had about uh, a permanent absentee ballot uh, list. <clears throat> and uh, I emailed Denise for the, for the good final word of this and I got it from her this morning. So thank you, Denise. And I just wanna read quickly what she says. Uh, the, the provision is that uh, permanent absentee voting lists uh, allow a person who says they are resident, registered, and permanently disabled to receive an absentee ballot. Applications for each election uh, 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 there to receive an absentee ballot application for each election. This part of the statute does not speak to anyone other than the permanently disabled. However, Missouri law does allow a person who is serving as a caretaker for someone who is confined due to disability to vote by absentee ballot, but you have to get your own application for each election rather than automatically sending it to you. So that's the final word on that, dis that discussion that we had yesterday. Thank you, Denise. Thank you, Linda. Yeah. All right. See you after lunch. <laughs>